Hello, thank you for joining me today. My name is Dr. Sylvia Black. I teach Rosemary Broker and I'm part of the Apartments. And I'm licensed to preach and ordained as a minister. And I have my PhD in Sacred Biblical Studies. And I'd like to thank you for joining me today for Real Estate, Religion, and You, which is every Wednesday, Public Access TV, channel 1302. And uh, on Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. to 7, and Saturdays from uh, 12.30 p.m. to 1 in the afternoon. And again, thank you for joining me today. Today, I'd like to talk to you on a continued basis of my book, Valley of Dry Bones. Okay. Uh, which is available on bondsandnobles.com, as well as lulu.com as well as Amazon Kindle. My YouTube channel, which is Esplac3001, there'll be a link. I usually put... Now, as you know, today we're going to talk on a continued basis of uh, rebuilding the walls of our torn down life. Or rebuilding our torn down walls. Okay? Now I'm going to be talking a little bit about Jericho. Now, as you know, as I talked earlier, Nehemiah rebuilt the broken walls, the torn down walls. But here now we have Jeremiah. He is actually, gets permission from God to tear down the walls. And I'm going to explain to you how the two of them actually make, how they, uh, how they clash, how they um, have something to do with the other. Now, this is also found in chapter 6 of my book. Um, now, Jericho was a military fortress, a strongly fortified city, built to defend the eastern approach to Canaan, the Promised Land. After crossing the River Jordan, Jericho uh, presented the biggest group for the Israelites in their mission to conquer Canaan, Joshua 6, 1 through 27. Now, according to Joshua chapter 6, the Israelites were commanded by God to march around the city walls once every day for six days and seven times on the seventh day. It was a rather outlandish march seeing that a section of the instructions read, do not give out a war cry, do not raise your voices, do not say not one single solitary word until the day I tell you to shout. That's found in Joshua 6.10. Now after marching around the city for the seventh time on the seventh day, when the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in, and they took the city, as God allowed them to do. Okay? The key here is to be obedient to the words of God. Now, God commissioned, God's commission to Joshua is as follows. Found in Joshua 1, 1 through 9, New King James Version, it reads thusly, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people to the land which I am giving to them. The children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. For the wilderness and, and as Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. And that's got to be good news to some of us right now. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right nor to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then that you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. 
Have I not commanded you? Be strong and good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Okay? Now for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing to the we here in doing of his mighty, powerful, and magnanimous word. Now that's got to be good news for some of us today, don't you think? Well, uh, he's commanding us, he's telling us, he's giving us specific instructions. He's not asking us, he's saying, do not be afraid. Be strong and of good courage. He's telling us to do this. He's, he's giving us an order. Okay? And he says, because he will never leave us nor forsake us. If we do this, okay, the, the book of the law shall not depart from our mouth. Okay? And we shall meditate on it day and night. Okay? That don't mean day through the night. That just means pretty much all the time. As often as you can. In the morning and in the evening. You see, then you will make your way. Then you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. So don't let it depart from your mouth. And then be obedient to it. And then you will make your way prosperous. And you will have good success. Okay? And God, God says he will never leave us nor forsake us. Now that's got to be good news. For whatever it is that we're trying to do, whether we're trying to rebuild walls or tear them down. Now God is also telling us to be strong and with courage. He's also giving us instructions for rebuilding and winning our fights. He tells us that the book of the law shall not depart from us. We shall meditate on his word day and night. Okay, God promises that if we are obedient to his word, that we will have good success and he will make our way prosperous, okay? These are instructions set forth by God to his people, to you and to me. Now Deuteronomy 31, 23, New King James Version says, Then he inaugurated Joshua the son of Nun and said, Be strong and of good courage, for you shall bring the children of Israel into the land of which I swore to them, and I will be with you. How many of y'all know that God is with us in everything that we do? He goes before us and prepares the way. Here the walls of Jericho fell down as one of miraculous power only by God. You may be able to shout at someone and instill fear in them, and in some cases, okay, uh, the people who uh, become afraid, who become afraid may fall. Okay, those of us who have the strength of God remain standing. And Jericho was destroyed without anyone touching the walls with their body. It was the Spirit of the Lord that allowed that to happen. Now the people had recently crossed over the Jordan River into the land of Canaan, which is as said to be the land of milk and honey, the promised land, found in Joshua 3, 14, 17. Uh, this was the land of milk and honey, the promised land God promised Abraham over 500 years ago. And like I said, God makes a promise. He doesn't go back on his promise. His word goes forth and it doesn't come back void. It always accomplishes what it was set out to do. This was 500 years ago that God made this promise to Abraham and he's keeping his promise to Joshua several generations later. After spending 40 years in the wilderness to get his act together, okay, now he was ready to fight. Okay. Now he was ready. Because God had made him ready. That's why God had allowed him to wander in the wilderness these some 40 years to humble thee, to test thee, to see if he would still continue to serve God or not. And that's what he does to you and I. Now Joshua also defeated the armies of 31 kings with his ragtag band of army refugees. Joshua defeated them by developing a strategy of defense. Like you and I need to do, develop a strategy of defense against the devil and be ruthless against him. He avoided the flat coastal plains where the large armies, cavalry and chariots have had the advantage. He headed for the hills, okay, which were, you know, up and down, okay, uh, where a sparse army strike force was able to move around easily. If you knew the hills, if you stepped in the wrong spot, you could trip. Joshua knew the hills very well, okay? But not where heavily artillery weapons and warriors cannot move around easily, and that is where Joshua would attack. Now these walls measured some 11 feet high and some 14 feet wide. At the top was a smooth slope, 
angled upward at 35 degrees, joined by other massive stone walls that towered much higher, making the walls in impenetrable. Okay. In other words, uh, Joshua did as God instructed, and with a loud shout, as loud as he could shout, the massive walls collapsed instantly, just as God has promised. Okay? And Israel won. God gave the city to Jericho to them before they even began to march around the walls, according to the Bible. It was by faith and obedience that the walls of Jericho collapsed, just as God promised. And it will be by faith and obedience that we rebuild our walls of destruction. Okay? It will be by faith. By faith and obedience that our walls will be rebuilt and sturdy. Okay? Okay, and why? Because God promised it. And when God makes a promise, he, His word goes forth, and it does not come back void. It always accomplishes what it was sent out to do. God makes a promise, He sticks to it. Not like a lot of people that you and I know. God's way is almost always different from our ways. Okay? Almost always. Sometimes there is a slight variation, and other times in certain people's lives, there's a big difference in God's way of handling things uh, than in our way of doing things. Okay, if what we want lines up with the Word of God, then that's great. Okay, our ways, goodness. our ways must line up with God's ways. And he, you know, it will happen because eventually you'll say, hey, I want to do it like that. Because that's the way God ordained it. Uh, and you know that you ain't going to get in the way unless you line up what you want with God the way God wants it done. Now we must exercise faith at all times, trusting entirely on God and His Word to get the job done. God's power is supernatural and goes way beyond the power of a man. The power we have is from God and goes far beyond comprehension, human comprehension. Sometimes I don't even understand the power that I possess. I didn't even know that I had the power in which to accomplish certain tasks. Okay? But the power that God gives me is the ability to defeat the enemy and overcome all obstacles placed in my way. This is the power God instilled in me and in you. We need to tap into that power and start exercising that power that God has given us. Okay, the Bible says <clears throat> that if we hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord, all these things shall be added unto us. <clears throat> the Bible also says that if I have faith the size of a mustard seed, I can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it shall be done for me. By faith without works is dead, no, but faith without works is dead. The Bible also says I had to learn. No, the Bible also says that faith is uh, faith without works is dead. Okay. I had to learn that the hard way. Okay, because uh, I thought that my faith and my prayer was going to get the job done by itself. But it was my faith and my prayers and my ability to get the job done. Okay. I have to take action too, you know, and just, just remember that. Okay, um, all right, so we just have to remember that God gives us the strength to fight these demons that try to lure us uh, back to our past. Okay, okay. Uh, and you think you may not be able to do anything about it, but you can. Even if you're hemmed up like in, in the belly of a whale, you feel that you may not have any control or any power over doing anything about it. But that's not true. Because we still have a heart and we still have a mind and we still have a mouth. And we can pray. Now with God leading the way and guiding, us, guiding me every step of the way, I cannot and will not get lost. None of us will. 
if God is leading your way, directing your path, being a light unto your feet, okay? Okay, I want to walk each day with God so I can be led by the Holy Spirit. You see, now nothing happens to you or me without God ordaining it first. Okay, God allowed those walls to come tumbling down, let Nehemiah rebuilt, uh, just like he allowed the city of Jerusalem to be defeated and tear down their walls. Okay? God will give us the victory over the enemy that is trying to keep us out of the promised land. Even if your walls are torn down, even if you're feeling vulnerable and without protection, God has his loving arms around us protecting us all along the way. And we also have heaven's armies fighting on our behalf. Okay? The forces of goodness always prevail over the forces of darkness. Okay? Why? Because God is stronger and more powerful than the devil. God created the devil. God cast the devil out of heaven. God paraded the devil around so that the world could see that the devil was defeated. Nothing happens to you or me unless God ordains it. The devil has to go to God for permission in order to afflict the child of God. Okay? So that's got to be good news to you if you didn't already know that. Now, the forces of goodness always prevail over the forces of darkness, I said. I will never stop believing that, okay, because it's, it's in the Bible also. And we can, we can and will conquer every adversary, adversity because God has already given us the power to tread on serpents. Okay, Jesus sits at the right hand of our Father, our Heavenly Father. We sit at the right hand of Jesus, and the devil is under our feet. God has already given us permission and the right and power and authority to tread on serpents, to plod them, to squash them, to keep them down. Okay, as I said before, God is a promise keeper. His words go forth and do not come back void. God's words always accomplish what they were set out to do. He never fails and he never leaves us alone to fight by ourselves. Okay, stop expecting bad things to happen. That's what a lot of us do. You know, something appears to look like it's to your demise, and what do you do? You've already spoken defeat out of your mouth, and guess what? If you speak defeat, you're going to be defeated. If you speak victory, you will be, uh, obtain victory. Now, those of us who have been persecuted by the enemy get used to being persecuted. Not necessarily saying that you enjoy being persecuted. It's just it becomes your comfort zone. Okay, you expect the enemy to persecute you because that's what they always have done in the past. Okay, you anticipate it even before it happens. Some of us even begin to prepare a defense or an offense strategy when it, uh, uh, before it even happens. Okay, worry about it, you know, it happening. Prepare, you prepare yourself. You do unnecessary things that are, you know, to, to uh, um, ward off the enemy so when they come, then you're going to be ready for them. No, we got to be ready for the enemy every time, regardless. Because we know that the devil goes to and fro to see who he can devour. Okay, we already know this. Okay, so we have to be ready for them. We have to be prepared, and we have to be ready with our offensive and our defensive strategy. And we have to be exercising it all along the way. Remember, as I spoke to you about defensive and offensive strategy, I believe it was chapter 2. Okay, um, now, that's why I believe Job was talking about when he said, what I have feared has finally come upon me, Job 3.25. Job anticipated his demise, and he may have spoken it into existence by saying those very words. What I have feared has come upon me. He was afraid that he was going to lose everything that he had. He was afraid that his family was going to be killed. That's what he's saying right here. He feared. He was scared. He was worried about it. Okay, and what happened? His family got killed. He lost everything. It even looked like he was going down, like his health was deteriorating, and he was going to rot out, rot his way out of the earth. His wife saw it as that, and she said, why don't you just go ahead and curse God and die? You know, she was really saying, get on out of my face. You know, I, she, I guess she couldn't just say, I want a divorce. You know, she had to stay married to the man. And she probably was talking about him like a dog, you know, and they was looking at her like she was crazy. Okay. Uh... So, but he, he, he anticipated it. He was expecting bad things to happen, and he was afraid that it was going to happen. And what happened? It happened. Okay? Instead of us concentrating so horribly 
on um, the problem, we need to concentrate more on the problem solver. Okay, because God is the best problem solver in the world. He's the best lawyer in town. He's the best physician. He's the best surgeon in town. He's the best uh, employer in town. Okay, he's the best physician. He's the best of everything. He's at the head of the class. He's the best fighter. He's the heavyweight champion of the world. He's never lost a war or a battle. And since we follow behind Jesus and we serve him and we're his children and friends, then that means that you and I will never lose another battle or another war ever again. So there's no reason to be afraid that it's going to come upon you. Speak victory, not defeat. Even if in your mind, that's probably the devil trying to play tricks on you, trying to make you believe it. But you defy those thoughts. Praise, worship, anything that pertains to the word of God. Read a scripture. Positive affirmations, okay? But scripture has to be used with it, you know. Just like when the devil came to Jesus when he was on the mountaintop and he was uh, uh, praying, been praying for 40 days and 40 nights. And Jesus must have been, God have been mighty hungry, ready to eat anything, you know, just to fill that belly of his. Okay, and here come the devil trying to, you know, uh, uh, tempt him with all these different things. And what did God, uh, Jesus do in his, uh, in his uh, offense? Okay, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. You know, yeah. you know, they'll turn away from you. That's one of the easiest ways to get rid of somebody who you don't want to be with. Speak scripture to their face, and they'll leave you alone. Talk church, and they'll probably trip over themselves. Now, like I said, Job had anticipated his demise, and he may have even spoken it into existence. Okay. Uh, claim your freedom from poverty instead of claiming poverty as your existence. Uh, claim freedom from emotional problems. Claim your freedom from family problems, sickness, failure, and fear, and so on. Claim your victory from sin. Claim it out loud with a verbal proclamation to God. Prophesy, declare, and decree that uh, whatever it is that you are asking God for, that it is done. Whatever it is for you. Okay, speak the words out of your mouth. Even if you're feeling afraid, you know, speak the opposite. I'm not afraid of you, devil. You know, I'm not af I'm not worried about you hurting me because I know God I bleed the blood of Jesus over my family. You know, I know that my walls will be rebuilt. It's not forever. This is just a season. You know, God is using this to teach me something, to make me strong, to humble me. You know, and I know, devil, you a liar. You know, you got to talk to him like you talking to your worst enemy, baby. Get out of my face, devil. In the name of Jesus, I command you to go now. Get lost. Go now. In the name of Jesus, I, I claim it. Amen. Don't forget to seal it with amen. In the name of Jesus, I command that you're gone. Worry, fear, doubt. Get out of my house. Get out of my mind. Get out of my life. Get away from my children, my family. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy, I declare, and decree. I bleed the blood of Jesus over my house, over my car, my, my dreams, my existence. You know, and start talking, you know, my God is more powerful. He defeated you once and he's going to defeat you again. And I applaud you, Satan. You know, I step on you. You know, I kick you. You know, you ain't got no power here. Get out of my face, you know. And then you just keep on singing songs as I am right in the devil's face. Oh, it's going to make him mad. Eventually he's going to go. He's got to go because he's a spirit. And he has to do what you tell him to do. He has to do what we tell him to do. Because he's a spirit. And we sit at the right hand of Jesus. So in the name of Jesus, I command you, Satan, to go now. Get out of my face, get out of my life, get out of my house in the name of Jesus. And you may have to do that several times a day because you don't realize that while some evil things are coming upon you, the thoughts that are coming into your head, why your children are acting up, why certain things are not going right, or you may think, you know, trying to twist your thoughts around and whatnot and make you think that that blessing is really a curse. No, you got to tell that devil to get out your face, honey. I'm a winner. I'm not a loser. Okay, I'm not, I'm not a failure. You know, that's what you classify me as. I'm not no failure. You know, I succeed in everything that I've done. I didn't fail. You know, uh, you know, you got to talk, talk yourself up, soup yourself up. You know, make sure you say, you know, as many positive affirmations that you can. Okay, because the answer is because of the curse that causes a person to be hemmed in obstacles and to be powerless over their circumstances. But the good news is, according to Galatians 3, that Christ has already redeemed us from the curse of the law. 
So you no longer have, we no longer have to live in defeat anymore. Never. We don't have to live in defeat. I will not, you just say it out your mouth. I will no longer live in defeat in the name of Jesus. I am victorious in everything I do. It may not look like it to the net, and you're natural, and I might not see it with my natural eyes right now, but I believe it in my spirit. The Bible says that if I speak to this mountain, if I have faith as small as a mustard seed, and I say to this mountain, move from here to there, I can tell anything to do what I want it to do in the spirit, and it must obey. It will obey. In the name of Jesus, we gotta, you know, you gotta start exercising. The problem comes, somebody cuts you off at the light, you know, praise the Lord that it wasn't worse than it was. You get up in the morning, thank God, thank you, Jesus, that you woke me up in the morning. Thank Him for allowing you to be able to get a good night's rest. You know, just be pray, just be prayerful, worship, thankful, and be humble. See, that's why God allow, tests us. He allows us to wander in the wilderness for these some 40 years to humble us and to test us to see if we're really going to serve him or not or if we just want him for what he can do for us you see what I'm saying yeah we want those walls of our lives to be rebuilt but we want them sturdy and strong but are you going to God just so that he can rebuild the walls and then what happens after he builds the walls for you are you going to turn your back on him or your punishment will be a whole lot worse if you do than if you had never known God in the first place okay Okay, this part two is going to come, this is, oh, this is so interesting, we, but this is really the basis of the book, you know, I mean, there's other things that I'll talk about in terms of encouraging, you know, we can rebuild these walls, we can do this, you know, it's in the mind and in the heart, don't let anybody else convince you otherwise, because God is the uh, omnipotent, omnipotent, he's supreme, he's ever present in a time of trouble, he's everywhere at the same time. Okay, now you you need to release the power of salvation, deliverance, so it stops the curse and releases all the blessings that God promised Abraham and in our lives today. Remember, He promised Abraham to a thousand generations down. You don't have to. None of us have to live in poverty or defeat anymore, or with emotional problems or sickness or fear of failure anymore. We can change our life today and experience the freedom from being cursed. Right now, in the name of Jesus, start practicing speaking these positive affirmations out of your mouth. But make sure you line those up with scripture. Remember, try to remember one scripture a day, every day. Okay? I have a picture of a cat, okay, hanging on a rope. Okay? It looked like he about to fall. Okay? And I typed on that, hang on in there. Help is on the way. And I have it posted at my desk, and I look up at that every so often, and I have some scriptures. Everywhere I go, in my bedroom, in the kitchen, in the living room, in the bathroom, in my office, everywhere I have scripture. So if I can't pick up the Bible on my phone and look it up, it's right in my face. And I put a different scripture up there. I try to remember my scripture. And what I learn, I put it into practice, okay? I speak positive affirmations. I praise the Lord for something that, I, or that I'm asking Him for today that I believe has already happened. You may only see two digits in your bank, but I'm, in your bank account, but I'm thanking Him for six digits. I'm looking at it and I'm saying thank you for those six digits, but only two digits are physically physical. But I'm thanking him because I know that God's going to bless me. You just don't know when. Soon, that's when he's going to bless you. Okay? <clears throat> so we're going to part, continue with part three on this now. This is very interesting. I didn't know it was going to be so many parts, but uh, this is really the basis of the book. Try to encourage us to rebuild these walls so that the, our bones, our dry bones can live again. Okay, and if you want your bones to live again, they will. Okay, it's just, it's all up to you. It's up to you. you. We think we don't have the power to control things, but we do. God gives us power. It says it in the Bible. Okay, and I had another book that I talked to you about, Power and Authority. Live victoriously. Take authority over the devil and take back your power. Okay, we have the power, baby. We have the power. God has given us everything that we already need. We just don't use it. We let the enemy whisper sweet nothings in our ears and tell us lies and convince us otherwise. Just like Adam and Eve. Eve uh, Adam believed Eve. Adam believed Eve instead of God. When God told Adam, if you eat of this tree, you're going to die, he believed his wife instead of... He said, but this is the woman you sent me? Yeah, but boy, I told you don't eat that tree. You and me, we were one before the woman even came along. You know, we were connected. We were here. I thought you understood. But if God comes to me personally and tells me, I'm not going to eat that, that tree. I don't care who it is that tells me. 
eat that tree or how good it is. Well, you go ahead on and eat it then, but God told me not to eat it. So I ain't going to eat it. So I'm going to ask you to join me next week. We're going to be talking about part three of rebuilding these torn down walls. Let's get hollow. This is the peace. And